Hello everyone and welcome back to another Ableton tutorial. Lovely to have you here. Big shout out Patreon gang, big shout out YouTube gang. Right, what are we looking at today? Well today actually came from a question over uh, on Patreon. Uh, one, of, one of the Patreon members over there was listening to a previous album of mine, uh, an album called Tetrama. I put that out in uh, 2022. It's a suite of four pieces for, uh, for solo instrument and for electronics. Uh, and this, this, uh, this question was about a piece called uh, The Bones of You that is on there, and in particular some of the sound design stuff in there. So uh, this is what the piece sounds like. So those kind of glitchy sounds in there that you heard and uh, you heard at the start of this video, that's what we're going to be looking at today. We're going to look at how to make a rack uh, inside of Ableton using Granulator to do that. Um, Patreon members, of course, can download this entire set, including these samples that I've prepared uh, to get you started. Uh, you can just drag and drop stuff in here straight away and get making. Uh, so let's take a look at this rack. Uh, let's, let's, let, let's make it from the start. Um, so, first thing I'm going to do is bring in a Granulator 3 instruments. Granulator 3. Uh, you don't need to use Granulator 3. You can kind of use any granulus, granular synth here. Granulator 2, if you're on Ableton 11, will work. I'm just using it. It's stock. All, gra all granular synths work kind of differently, but uh, yeah, what we're going to do today, uh, you should be able to do on any kind of granular synth. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to drag one of these audio samples uh, that I've prepared here. I've got... Uh, uh, well, that's a drone that I've called a power drill drone. Uh, I've got a knife sheen, some glitchy sounds, some crying whales. Not actually crying. No whales were harmed in the making of this video. Uh, this was just uh, some feedback loops on the modular. Uh, a simple snare drum uh, and some nice uh, tones uh, from a prepared piano. Let's start off with uh, let's start off with the power drill. Uh, and I'm just going to drag that where it says drop sample here. So I'm just going to click and drag and drop in here. I'm going to turn on monitor in there, off on the on the finished version of the rack. Uh, and so now when I press a note on my computer keyboard, we can we can hear here we can hear it playing over here. Uh, so let's take a look at these controls here on on the granulator because this is what we're going to be really using. So the position here. Uh, we can see it's sort of scrolling through on the sample when I when I change the position. The scan is how quickly it continues moving through the sample after I press go. So if I turn the scan up, uh, we can see it we can see it moving through the sample. Uh, if I turn it up quite a, quite fast, we can see it moving through the sample uh, quicker. Let's turn that turn that back. Uh, the grain size. So what a granular synthesizer does is it splits the audio up into into tiny tiny grains. Uh, in this case, at the moment, they're currently set. Each grain is two hundred and fifty milliseconds long. Uh, and as I change that, uh, we can we almost get into audio rate uh, grain size there. Some kind of car plus strong synthesis happening there. Um, so uh, that becomes a bit more apparent. Let's move the position up into this sort of louder part. And I'm going to change the shape. So I'm going to leave the grain size on 234. And the shape, uh, this is a modulation wheel. It goes from sort of very short, sharp uh, sawtooth wave all the way through to uh, a sine wave. You hear as I'm moving, as I'm moving it through. So when the shape is in the middle, we're getting these sort of really elongated overlapping sounds, but if we make it uh, either fully fully left or fully right, uh, we get sort of uh, comings and goings of sound as well. Uh, so with that up high, we can hear more what the grain size is doing now as well. Uh, now variation. Variation allows us to add an amount of variation to all kinds of things uh, connected that we've, we've just looking at, in particular, uh, the position. So it's going to randomly change position uh, every time it gets a new note. The grain, uh, this is the grain size of variation. We can also do it on the transpose and also the volume. I'm going to turn that up to 100 and the position also up to 100, but that won't actually make any difference until I actually turn the variation up. And now we can hear that's doing a whole bunch of 
interesting things. I might already put an uh, OTT at the end of this, uh, an OTT being the, mul the, the preset on the multiband dynamics over the top preset, but what that's going to do is that's going to really bring out all of the all of the different aspects of the sound and give it a bit more coherency well it's, it's kind of it's kind of flatlining it isn't it so it's making it making it so it's kind of much more there all the time okay so the first thing i'm going to do uh to create some kind of movement through this sound is i'm going to use a, a midi shaper effect so i'm just going to drag that in the start it needs to come in before the instrument of course being a midi effect it's affecting the midi signal uh and i'm going to connect this i'm going to change the rate to be uh one bar and i'm going to just map that uh to the grain size <laughs> we can hear it's doing some stuff. Okay, so I'm going to change that to be uh, unipolar. So we can see it kind of, yeah, we can see it really. And I'm going to bring this grain size down to the shortest that I might ever want it. Which is probably, probably kind of around there. Uh, yeah, nice. Now, uh, what we can do here on the shape of MIDI is press random. So when I click random, we just get a random shape. And we can hear that the, the, the grain size is really following that shape. Uh, this is going to be very, very useful later on. So I'm now going to put all of this into a rack, select it all, Command G, we're going to group it, and we're going to start mapping some stuff onto the macros here. The first thing I'm going to map is uh, these these controls down here. So right click on position, map to macro one, uh, on click, uh, on scan, map to macro two, on grain size, map to macro three, shape, map to macro four. Uh, let's connect the transpose to map to macro five. Uh, spread is also going to be nice, map to macro six, give it some sort of stereo imaging if we want. Variation, uh, map to macro seven. and this I'm going to map to macro 8. So this is going to be uh, this sort of grain size envelope. And when I change the depth here, we can hear that it's not doing anything. So I'm going to map that to macro 8 because that's also going to be really nice to be able to play with. Cool. Uh, so now I can sort of randomize these. <laughs> And already we're getting some interesting results. I'm going to constrain some of these ranges a bit. So I'm going to open up map and I'm going to say that the grain size, what did I want as the lowest uh, grain size? It was certainly not all the way down there. It was, let's turn the depth down. Uh, let's turn the shape so we can. That's kind of the lowest grain size that I want. So let's say 20 milliseconds. So I'm going to come in here and the grain size, say lowest is 20 milliseconds. And the highest, I'm going to set that actually, uh, let's bring that down to, yeah, somewhere around there. Uh, okay, transpose, I'm also going to constrain that range. Uh, that's going to get quite out of control. Minus 12 uh, and plus 12. Okay, so now... Nice. <laughs> Fun. So we can hear that each time I'm pressing random, we're getting some some new starting points. Now what I find with this kind of synthesis is it's it's really fine-tuning it that you get the really interesting results. So that's why I've mapped all of these to these macros to be able to randomize instead of done it with an expression control. We could of course bring an expression control in here and randomize these things with each new MIDI note. Uh, but I find with this kind of sound design, what's nice is to find a sort of a, a ballpark and then really dial in the parameters of that. So maybe bring the variation down on that. Yeah, super nice, or change the shape even. Maybe change the start position. 
and then we're, we can now save this as as a preset, of course, in the snapshots over here. Uh, the, any any combination of these that we like. We can also hit random here. And again, we're sort of generating new new things every time. <laughs> Fun. Uh, okay, let's do some post-processing in here. So I think, uh, first of all, I'm going to put a limiter at the end. Uh, trying, to, trying to get into the good habit of putting a limiter at the end of everything. Let's bring in a raw, actually. I think that is going to be really nice for some... Do, you can kind of do some, some of the compression. Going to change it to single mode. Uh, going to change this to uh, tube preamp. Way nice. Actually, I'm going to come into the granulator and I'm going to just turn off the release envelope. I'll turn it really... Yeah. Yeah. Okay, where's, where's the raw gone? Yeah, okay, I'm going to connect both of these to a macro. Uh, I'm going to connect that to macro 12, actually. Uh, U macro 12, and it's the feedback amount that I want to map to there. And let's change that range a little bit. Yeah feedback amount down to maximum sort of 10 or 15 something like that yeah so we can make it so it's kind of on the edge let's let's go and play with some of these and see what see what happens with some of this shape yeah nice interesting uh okay let's now add uh well, let's add a reverb after that of course uh hybrid reverb uh in before the limiter please uh let's map dry wet to macro nine and decay to macro 10 and i'm gonna bring those down lovely oh let's let's add a comb filter in before the raw and here i'm going to use ableton's new auto filter uh if you're on ableton 11 you don't have to do this you can do something else in here i'm just adding some post-processing that's going to be interesting i think so i'm going to change this to the comb filter and the frequency somewhere around there and i'm going to use this shaper midi we're going to use that to modulate uh, the, the frequency of that. Yeah, that's doing something interesting. So let's add that dry wet to macro 11. Uh, let's rename some of these. Macro 12, that's uh, raw. Uh, yep, grain size. Uh, let's rename this. Green depth envelope, because that's kind of what that is. Um, okay. Uh, now, oh yeah, some bit crushing. That's going to be super nice on this. Uh, that can come in uh, before the reverb, I think. Let's use Redux. <laughs> Yeah. So let's add the rate to macro 13. Let's add the jitter to macro 14. And let's add the dry wet to macro 15. Cool. And I want to be able to control, like maybe add just a little bit of modulation to this this envelope here. Let's turn the bit crushing off for now. Maybe comb off as well. Cool. Um, yeah, just, just getting a sort of more consistent sound there. So yeah, I'm going to add a little bit of uh, variation so that this kind of wiggle around a bit more so I'm going to do use an LFO audio effects LFO that can go anywhere after the after the instrument doesn't matter
a green envelope vary. Uh, now I'm going to map that to, I'm going to change that to random. Uh, I'm going to add some smoothing so it smooths in between the values. Uh, I'm just going to leave the rate kind of free like that. And I'm going to map that to green envelope here. And then I can use this depth to control how much that's doing. So that's going to map to macro 16. Yeah. Cool. So now we've built this, this lovely rack. Uh, let's... And depending on what samples we put in, we get super different results. So that was this sort of drony sample that I was working with there. If I drag this knife sample in here. And again, we can, oh, we can hit randomize. But now we're also randomizing all of these, um, all of these effects as well. And I, actually, I think these things are really quite nice to dial in afterwards. So I'm going to right click, exclude macro from randomization, also on the verb decay. Uh, comb filter, let's exclude that from randomization. Raw, let's exclude from randomization. Bit crush. All of these we're going to exclude from the randomization because they're nice to dial in after after randomizing an effect. So let's turn all of these down. Uh, yeah, so now we have this, this very pure sound. This has no post processing. Um, so now I find it's nice to actually dial these things in to taste. And of course, if we, if we want to try a sort of different shape through the sound, we can hit random here. Uh, we could try it with a snare drum. Let's, let's just drag and drop a snare drum in here. What happens if we put in some sort of uh, piano tones in here? <laughs> so you can see you get super different results depending on the samples that you put in or even hitting the random over here. We can, of, the, of course, then just hit new on the snapshots and save those variations. What is that? That's, that's the... These uh, snapshots, of course, will not save these envelopes, though. Uh, so these ones, so these ones, uh, you're gonna just have to, just just gonna have to have to deal with that. <laughs> so what I like to do is find a bunch of stuff that I like, and then actually resample them. Um, so that then I've got whole folders full of these kind of sound design sessions where I'm making these kind of sounds. Oh, that's actually quite nice. A little tip, if you're trying this and you're not sort of hearing these kind of sounds, the things to really, really play with are the grain size and the grain shape in particular. If you remember from uh, right at the start, when the grain shape is in the middle here, uh, we're getting a very constant sound no matter what else is happening. So really splitting these grain shapes. This is where we really begin to get these kind of, these sounds. Maybe you want constant sounds. <laughs> yeah, you can dial these into your to, to your own desire. Uh, you're adults. You can make your own decisions. So that's it. That's it for today. That's this this rack. Uh, lovely question. Thanks very much for the question over on Patreon. Uh, link in the description below if you want to go and grab uh, this pack. It's available to all Patreon members, or you can grab it as a one-time post. Uh, thanks for being here. We'll see you next time.